The 16th question says the length L in centimeter of a copper rod is a linear function of its Celsius temperature. Okay. Temperature, increasing the temperature increases the length. Expansion on increasing temperature, yes. Expansion and contraction on change of temperature. That's something which you have studied in physics. And there's a question, question based on that. In an experiment, if L equals this when C equals 20 and L equals this when C equals this, express L in terms of C. It is given, mind you, it is given that it is a linear function. Since the person has said that this is a linear function, L is in centimeter and Celsius temperature C. So we are interested in L and C, a relation between L and C. And since the rel relation is linear, therefore, what you will get is a linear function that is a straight line. Okay, straight line kind of in this. And on the straight line, you are given two points. Which axis will be the x axis? Let's take, okay, we can change the temperature. So let's take temperature as an independent function. On the basis of temperature, the length changes. So let's mark C over here. Let's mark L over here. Okay. C is on the x-axis, so the first point will be 20, comma 124.942. This is point A, let's say. The other point B will be 110, comma 125.134. Now, you have converted that whole problem into this graph now. And you can easily solve this graph because that's what we have been doing for so long, right? We can easily solve and get... L in terms of C. Basically, Y in terms of X is what we are interested in. Okay, we are interested in the equation of this line. Yes, we are interested in the equation of this line. You know how to find that. This is two-point form. Let's apply concepts. Y minus Y1 is equal to two-point form. This is what you need, right? Instead of Y and X, you get L and C respectively. So therefore, L minus L1, let's use this, 124.942 is equal to y2 minus y1, this minus this, okay, 125.134 minus 124.942 upon x2 minus x1, 110 minus 1, 110 minus 20 times x minus x1, which is x minus 20. This is what I'm getting. Okay. Let's simplify this further. This is 90 over here. Is it? Yes. So this becomes 90 times L minus 90 times 124.942 is equal to, what is this? 125.134 minus 124.942. Let's subtract them. 4 minus 2 is 2 and uh, 13 minus 4 will be 9. And then you get a 0 over here. 0 minus 9 is difficult. So what you'll do is carry forward this. This will become this. And this is 0. 0 0.192 x minus 0 0.192 times 20 is what I'll be getting over here. This is the equation. Okay. That will not be x. That will be a c over there. Right. Let's change that x to c. This is not x. This is c over here. This is C. This is C. Okay. Once you make that modification. Now let's continue further. So you have expressed L in terms of C. Oh, you are interested in only L in terms of C, is it? That would be a relatively simpler one. We don't have to multiply this by 90 over here. So we can skip that step. Maybe L equals something. Okay. We can skip this step. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have. L minus 124.942, let's rewrite it as, this is equal to 90 times this. So, 90 will come in the denominator, 0 0.192 upon 90 times C minus 20. Let's write it as this. And this tells me L equals, pretty simple, L will be equal to, in terms of C, this will be equal to 0 0.192 upon 90, okay times c minus 20 plus 124.942 you do not need a relation in x and y you need l in terms of c and this is the value that i am getting 
this is what I will be having. Right? Express L in terms of C, this is what we have. Although we can simplify it further by multiplying 0 0.19 to 0.19 to C and multiplying this with 20 and maybe dealing with this one over here. But we can leave the answer at this stage as well. That is the complete solution of this 16th question in front of us.